Welcome in to the Cubs Talk Podcast, a presentation of NBC Sports Chicago and NBCSportsChicago.com. Claire Phillippe, Tony Gill, always at the controls. Tim Stevens, Gordon Wittenmeyer, I'm David Kaplan, and we have a breaking news emergency podcast. Dansby Swanson is in agreement on a seven-year, $177 million deal. He will play shortstop for the Chicago Cubs. That is is a really good thing to say. And as Jeff Passett tweeted, it gives the Cubs with Bellinger in center and those two and Jan Gomes defensively, maybe best middle in all of baseball. Gordon, you're first. Yeah, I think that that last point is the best point. By the way, shout out to you. Props to you, Cap. Excellent job breaking that story. Had it Appreciate it. Thank else. you. Um, but yeah, I think that what stands out about this deal are, are, are number one, they went and got one of those guys. They had to get one of those guys. They, otherwise, and we've talked about this the last two podcasts we did and we've written about it, it would have been a failed offseason. I mean, I, there would, would have been no other way to sum it up. They salvaged their offseason with this move. This was big. This is a big step forward. This is a building block in whatever they come up with the next few years. That's number one. But number two is that, that big, huge point you made. They've made a point this, this winter to look at run prevention. And with the shift going away in particular, that's one of the big reasons they had to have one of these guys. They might have got the best glove of the four. They did not come close to getting the best bat of the four. I think we know that. So they're going to have to find a way uh, to add to their run scoring ability. But as far as their run prevention, they now have a gold glove shortstop. They moved Nico to second, where they where he was a gold glove finalist before he improved his defense as a shortstop last year. Then they had Cody Bellinger added as a former gold glove outfielder to sticking him in center, where they already have a gold glove left fielder who just won one this year. And a guy in right, who as Tim pointed out on the last podcast, had won multiple golden gloves as a Japanese outfielder in the NPB. And you got Jan Gomes behind the plate. But the middle infield itself, is probably the best this side of, let's just say San Francisco, which picked up Carlos Correa and already had Brandon Crawford. We don't know if Crawford's going to play second or third. If he plays second, that, that's as good as this one. But, I mean, that's what we're talking about, right? It's one of the best middle infields, and that has never been more important with the shifts going away. Tim? Yeah, how about that? And a nice uh, present under Cubs fans' trees from uh... – from Jed and Jed and Co. I think they had to do something, man. We we talked at nauseum about this. Um, Gordon, you, you said right now, like it salvaged their off season. Like the bat, you know, we talk about track record and maybe not as long for Swanson compared to especially like Correa Bogarts, but there's no doubt this makes them a better team. It, that doesn't mean they have to stop now. They should they have to keep adding offense. We've said that uh different options that would be out there. If they didn't get a shortstop, now that they got one, he, he's he's got, been a guy who year over year has seemingly improved in, in underlying metrics. And we know the 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 you know traditional stats like home runs, RBIs have gone up in recent years for him. So he might have unlocked something here. But I think like we're saying here, the biggest thing, man, is for a pitch to contact rotation. You know, no no flamethrowers who are going to strike out two hundred fifty guys. You, you are putting together a damn good defense, and that is a formula we've seen other teams do in the past, very recent past, with much success and winning, I guess I should say. So I talked to both Chip Carey, the voice of the Atlanta Braves, as well as a good friend of mine who scouts in Major League Baseball. Both guys said, you're getting a tremendous leader, outstanding defender. He'll give you pop. They said he's really good. Fastball in, he can turn and take it to Waveland Avenue. He said, here will be, a, as Chip put it to me, there will be a three-week stretch where he will carry the team by himself, and everybody will be like, this guy's amazing. He said, and then he's going to strike out 175 times, and you're going to be like, oh, come on. We can't have all these strikeouts. He said, that is what you get with him. He said he's a very family-oriented guy. He is a very good leader in the room, and if he's one of your better players, it's a great thing. If he's your best player, your team's not good enough. So we, so the Cubs could have kept Javi Baez and uh, maybe had the same thing for not quite as many years? Uh, maybe. I don't know. We're going to find out. Let's see how Dansby Swanson plays here. Maybe you yeah, go trade Javi and put Javi a third. Yeah, right, right. 
Uh, it, it is it looks fascinating to see how this plays out. I'm just glad they're going big, right? The fans deserved it. The fans pay for it. This team needed to go big, and they did. They didn't. They didn't get Correa. They didn't even make him an offer, um, but they did get one of the big boys, and that's good. I mean, you, you take what they did last year. They got Suzuki. They targeted Suzuki, and they got him on a five year deal. They, by the way, they committed almost a hundred million dollars to that deal when you had the posting fee in, and then and then if they keep Ian Happ and they keep Horner, they also added Stroman last year. Now they had Jamison Ty on this year, and this guy on one seventy seven. I like that they're going big. They needed to do that. They've stripped stripped it down. Fans deserve it. Hopefully, this pays off in in a way that that we that it's a big piece of a a big step forward in the win losses on the field. And uh, we'll see what else they can do. Tim, I mean, great point on I mean, who would you add at this point? Because I think you made that point earlier. Don't stop now. OK, what if Tim, what if you go? I was kidding with the hobby bias. He's not on the market. But what if you go get Justin Turner to play third? Another good leader. Get him on a short like a one or two year deal. And you put wisdom slash Mervis over at first. And then I is Danny Jansen or whoever. Go get a solid defensive catcher that could play along with Jan Gomes. And all of a sudden, I'm like, okay, I'm not telling you you're winning the World Series, but it's a decent team. Yeah, I don't – I mean, none of us are going to sit here and say if they add a couple more pieces, this is a World Series team next year. There's there's no way. But I think if, you, if you're talking the way you are, Cap, and, like, if you get Justin Turner, and we said on the last pod how strong he finished the last three months last year, and – if that can carry over next year, and if you get like a first baseman like Mancini to pair with Mervis and uh, a catcher like what have you, like if you do those moves, and that's a big if, you know, you start to see the makings of a, a potential wild card team with the, the expanded format. But uh, I still think no matter if you do add those guys, a lot of stuff does have to go right. We, you know, we talk about Bellinger and the Gold Glove. You know, he's going to bring that, but what does he give you next year? We talk about Matt Mervis. Uh, assuming he's going to be a part of this team, a big part of this team, maybe not 600 plate appearances. What does he give you? What does your pitching give you? We, we thought this rotation looked pretty solid going into last year and it, it got banged up. So um, if you add a couple more pieces, it looks a lot more competitive in one of baseball's worst divisions. But uh, there are still factors there that are questions, even if you do add pieces. Starting Gordon, pitching, add starting yeah. pitching to make this team a contender for one of those wild card spots, but then you got to find bats. The rest of your position, whatever you add to your position playing core from this point forward, I think you have to be bat first with it. I'll, I'll add this too really quick because, Cap, you brought it up a few moments ago, uh, kind of the type of hitter he is. I, I do like this about Swanson. You look at his spray chart from 2022, and he, he goes gap to gap. Uh, I think Wrigley is a its own animal, and the wind we've seen – the best of the best hitters get, you know, punished by it. But if if you're a guy who can who can go left to foul pole to foul pole, I guess I should say, which you look at his spray chart last year, he did. I, I do like that profile for Wrigley Field. Um, the strikeouts are a thing for sure. The walks aren't as there. Like we talk about compare him to Correa. Those are that's a big difference between those two guys. But uh as a hitter, there there's some aspects of him that I like with with this ballpark. So I like the fact that they, as you guys said astutely at the start of this, they prioritized defense. He gives you some pop, and he gives you opportunities defensively now to go, hmm, the game has changed, and the Cubs were not reactionary. They actually were proactive. Um, well, if they were proactive, they'd have done what the Rangers did last year a year ahead of the rules change that a lot of people knew was coming. They went out and got two middle infielders, uh, both of whom have big bats. So, I mean, that's proactive. I mean, you could make the case that they waited out the market and got the least expensive guy. I mean, I don't know what all went in to the background on this. I know that at one point I had people telling me who, who uh, would know that they were in on Correa and then at one point pivoted, probably right around the time coming, uh, right around the time the winter meetings ended, um, that they pivoted to Swanson as a plan B. So that's one way to look at it too. So I don't know about proactive, but I do think that there were still a lot of teams left in this marketplace for this player and they got him. And I'm going to give them credit for that. 
Tim, if the season was spring training was tomorrow, and I told you they added another catcher, they didn't add any other type of bat. Where is this team finish? I think if it's if you're just talking like a catcher, and we keep saying Jansen, uh, that's probably like sec- the Cardinals are still better than you at that point. I'll put it that way. I, I paused because I was going to say maybe second, but the Brewers still have two of the best pitchers in baseball. Who, by the way, I don't think pitch as well as they had in in previous years in 2022, and they still were pretty damn good. Um, the Brewers also added some offense with w- William Contreras, Wilson's brother. So like. The Cardinals, man, we the Cardinals were a, a playoff team in 22, and then they went out and got your catcher, who was your best hitter. So, like, I think they're still a notch ahead of you, but um, I still think that you don't have a team in this division like the Mets, the Braves, who had 100-plus wins each. You don't have the Dodgers and then what the Padres have done. Like, if you keep adding, I say wild card, um, I don't know how good the Cardinals are going to be. I still think the Cardinals win the division, but it's more competitive on paper at the least, right? Yeah, th- I think at this point, if you look at it again, like like you're saying, Tim, on, on paper, as it's constructed right now, uh, and I assume they're going to add some pitching to this, but they picked up uh, a Brad Boxberger too, p- pretty good reliever last year, um, and and in and in his career, so that's a nice piece. They've already got some pretty good pieces out there. They've got some pieces in the rotation. I assume they're going to add some more to that. If if they ha- add enough choices and, and enough quality there, you're going to see them able to keep scores down of their opponents um they're also going to face some lineups that have improved quite a bit since last year as they face a more balanced schedule and face everybody in baseball so that's going to be a challenge they're not a team right now that's going to score as many runs as they did last year that's what on paper that's what they look like and if they don't significantly add some hitting whether that's incrementally in a whole bunch of increments where, where you've had balance and, and, and on base or whether you go out and get a, a big piece, um, then you're looking at a best case scenario where you win low scoring games. And that's going to be, you know, Jed didn't like it um, in terms of like, you know, team really good teams blow out teams and the Cubs didn't do that. When they were at their best, they won one run games. This year. That's what next year is going to look like with lower scoring games the way it, it's built right now. That's not a terrible thing. It keeps you in a lot of games. They have to finish second in this division to have a chance at a wild card because there's too many good teams on the coasts that could make it two, two wild cards out of one of those divisions. Um, so uh, you've got to beat the Brewers minimum to even have a chance to get in. And right now it's going to be done with catching the ball and throwing the ball. Well, gentlemen, I hope we have another emergency podcast at some point this holiday season. But again, Dansby Swanson is in agreement with the Cubs. Seven years, $177 million. You guys have a great rest of your Saturday night. I'm going to go have a cocktail, a little dinner. It's a good day. We'll be on the keyboard. Check out NBCSportsChicago.com for uh, some more content out of this out of this news. Bam! There's your two articles you've got to read. There you go. Take that. You guys have a great one. See ya.